Oh my goodness. Welcome to Crossing the Streams, everyone. What? Hey, everybody. We've got we got a crazy show for you today. Yes, we do. Hang on. I'm just uh okay, so let's kick things off right away. We have Jennifer, Larry, Tim, and Fred, all guests to the show. We're gonna do the theme song real quick. I'm gonna let Jennifer kick off the theme song. Here's the story of some lonely fellows who spend way too much time watching TV. All of them have jobs and friends. Well, not really. Just between you and me. Great job, Fred. They made a live show out of their hobby. Every TV watcher's TV watching dream. Jeff, Ron, Sal, and Bob, and Howard, and none of them are here. They call it crossing streams. <laughs> oh, Larry. And then one day they went live on all the platforms. You could hear the people laugh and shout and scream. Still can't find another word that rhymes with platform. But man, we cross the stream. Everyone, we cross the stream. Cross streams. We, we cross, cross the, the streams. Stream. That's the way, way, way we do it. Here, here we, we cross, cross the, the streams. streams. Wow. That was like the Bee Gees. Uh, that's, that's just yeah. horrid. Yeah, that was, yeah, BG. that was honestly one of the better ones that I've heard. I can't <laughs> yeah. wait for the groupies. You know, yeah, we the, got tons always, of groupies off of that. It always breaks apart at the end. Streamyard cannot handle the magic. Uh, <laughs> keep your bras and panties on. I know that. All right, we, we have four guests. Uh, to you. Thank you guys for joining me. Jennifer Jeez. Field, author, romantic, paranormal, romance paranormal. author. Tell, Tell uh, everyone about your books and where they can get them and all that kind of stuff. Well, you can plug it again at the end. Yeah, so you can you can get them on Amazon. Uh, you can get them anywhere, actually. You can get them on Amazon. It's the easiest way to get them. I write paranormal romance. So uh, my current series is the uh, Blood Angel Chronicles. It's a story of, well, not story. It's a series of the fallen angels that create the vampire race. Sexy. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of sex. There's lots of violence. All the good stuff. Where do you Sweet. get your ideas from, Jennifer? Uh, I'm psychotic, so <laughs> that helps. <Fantastic. laughs> that, that's about it. Yeah, you know, just somewhere in the deep, dark recesses of my mind, I guess. Awesome. Yeah. When was that? Back in the late 90s, maybe it was? Mid-90s when Anne Rice and the interview series and all those were the hotness. And this crazy chick that I dated, she was into the whole vamp thing. And I probably still have some scars, I think, where she would bite. Yeah, yeah it was. It hey, was, nothing wrong with that. Hey, I remember it, you know, and this was, you know, 25 years ago. So it must have. Please, we're trying that. to keep it PG 30. Well, you know, I've just said they're scars, Jeff, you know, <laughs> emotional. <indeed>. Emotional. <laughs> PG 13. Fred, what Hello. do we got? We got How are you, Jeff? Dave, nice Dave to see you. Good to yeah. see you, man. Good to have you back. Friend of the show, Fred, return. Guess this is Jennifer's first time. But everyone else returned, but she'll be yeah, back. And people remember Jennifer and I were co-hosts on a show together. That's right. This is a reunion show. And then, we were an and, item. And then she dumped me and, you know, moved on without me. And this is where I am now. But I'm still podcasting. I'm still doing the apostrophes podcast for writers. I am writing books. I write books. I write screenplays. I film movies. And that's it. And I work. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Tim, a lot. tell everyone about your podcast. Hi, Friend of the I show, am. Tim Brissigle. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm the host of the FSF podcast. I host it with two of my friends, Kathleen and Nick. And we're an interview-based podcast. Uh, every Friday we have a new episode coming out. Uh, this Friday will be Cal Dodd from X-Men animated series. He played Wolverine. Uh, but that's just, yeah, so you can find us, best place to find us uh, is www.fsfpopcast.com, and you can get access to our YouTube channel, our Patreon channel, our all our fun stuff from there. That is fun stuff. Larry Roberts, Red Hat Media. Yeah, what's happening? How are you? Well, I'm better now that I'm here with you once again, Jeff. I always love being a guest of the show. Thank you once again for having me. Um, you know, I don't even have a podcast really anymore. I, I, I do have a podcast called You're the Boss. Uh, it was just the stereotypical entrepreneur podcast where I interviewed entrepreneurs. And honestly, I quit, I quit, I quit the show because it felt like I was just an infomercial for all these business owners. They'd come on, they'd tell about their latest product, their latest book, whatever it may be. 
and then they leave a hundred dollars on the nightstand and I never hear from them again. So uh, I, I just kind of quit that. It just wasn't fulfilling at all. And I have not yet started another show to replace that one. So I've been guesting on a lot of podcasts, uh, helping launch podcasts, as you know, heavily involved with PodFest. Uh, so that's been my passion over the last several months. Tim, Tim. has a question. You, they left you a hundred dollars. How, yeah. how did you swing that one? <laughs> yeah, it was monopoly money. It wasn't real money at all. It was, <laughs> okay. it was, it was podcast money. So it's, I'd it's, be, I'd be okay with monopoly money at this point. I mean, let's talk. No, yeah. Kidding, yeah. Right? Podcast money. It doesn't count. So, uh, but no, I will have a show starting up. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we're, we're, we're definitely trying to cook up something new. Maybe I need to read some paranormal romance novels and get inspired. Maybe. Uh, yeah. I'll do a podcast with you. The, you, uh, <laughs> you should do a podcast given you go to every podcast. Considering I talk. speak at podcast conferences and all I, my entire business revolves around podcasts, I should probably have my own show. It's, yes. You know, yeah. I have a show. I have a podcast. The, a um, yeah. Yeah. You do? So I love it. You talk about like, like, we're, so I'll get emails. People will pitch the show. Yeah. And, the, and they'll be like, Jeff, Tim is the number one realtor in all of Florida. <laughs> We he made a million dollars last week selling a giant house. He'd love to be on your show. And I'm like, and then I, I try to always be nice. I'm like, I am sure Tim is the greatest realtor ever. <laughs> However, my show <laughs> is yeah, that I, nothing is so more annoying when people pitch and it's not even close. No, like, no. They, like they're getting, and you know, they're getting paid. They got paid to send me that email. It's yeah. So annoying. Those placement so, agencies, they're not cheap. I mean, they're, you know, they're four to $600 a show per placement. So they're getting paid right. good money to get these people on podcasts and they don't even know what they're pitching. It's it's really amazing to see that. Insane. So, all right. So Ted uh, Lasso is back for everyone. We're not going to talk about Yay. it, but it is back. And then uh, Mandalorian is back. They're both on episode three. So uh, I've been, I'm not caught up with, I uh, know Mando is ahead of that. Man, it was a new ep episode three. Mm -hmm. I was gonna let you slide. Yeah, uh, is it episode three? Or I think, no, we're, up to, I think we're up to four now. Yeah, four or yeah, five. Four. I didn't watch today's. I didn't watch today's. I haven't watched today's either, but that's four. It, I believe. it was the... very good today. I'm just gonna say that. I've liked oh. them all. I've liked them all. Yeah, today's was very good though. Just more than normal. It was good. Um, cool. And it's then no I Boba finally fed, but it's it's okay. And Boba Fett was not good. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> Except for the Mandalorian episodes. Yeah, those were great. So, all Mandalorian right. Mandalorian season 2.5. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All right. We got a great show for you today on Crossing the Streams. So this is going to be fun. So but let's recap. Last week, last week we talked about the Howard Stern interview with Bruce Springsteen with Marcy Cozen's brother, Aaron, who is a avid Bruce Springsteen fan. Uh, we talked about the Outlaws entourage and and the documentary perfect bid the perfect bid so uh that was last week this week this episode this aliens were best of the best so we got a whole 80s block and we got shrinking which uh, uh fred's gonna officially put on the books a card and bad batch we got we got quite a show everybody so i think i'm gonna let fred kick it off Oh joy! You're gonna give me to the we're beginning. Talk, yeah, we're gonna talk about. Shrinking. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's bang it out. So shrinking, <laughs> shrinkings with Jason Segal. You know Jason Segal. Everybody Steven's knows Jason. younger brother. Yeah, I do. Well, Jason Segal. This is available on Apple TV, and it's created by him and Roy Kent, also known as Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso, and it also stars Harrison Ford and Ted McGinley among a spattering of newcomers and people that you've seen before but never knew their names. So I'll read the byline for you just so you got an idea of what we're talking about here. So a grieving therapist starts to break the rules by telling his clients exactly what he thinks. Jimmy plays Jimmy, played by Siegel, has lost his wife and wants to try a new approach to his loss but is unclear of how to help others. So on top of it all, that's... I don't even agree with that byline after watching it. it. It's so much bigger than that. But it, you know, it deals with uh, parenting teenagers, parenting a teenager who's also grieving for the loss of her mother, has his mentor played by Harrison Ford, who's going through his own shit that he's dealing with, PG-13. 
his own shoot. Um, and it, it makes it an amazing, dramatic comedy. It's Jason. I think Jason Segal clearly has a fetish for Muppets or vampires because he talks about them in all his movies, all his shows. But the dialogue, the cinematography, they're a lot of fun to watch. It also has all the things that I often do in my life. Drama, comedy, therapy, and sex. Okay, not sex. Not sex. I, I don't... <laughs> I don't not actually, in that order. Not in that order. Thanks. I don't actually have sex. So, and here's a sidebar. I'm going to go off on a rant here for a little bit. So, I'm single. I'm financially stable. I'm a solid six, considering my age of almost 54. Solid six, right, Jennifer? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I suppose you're a northeast <laughs> six. I'm a solid six. I'm a I'm a Connecticut six. Yeah. We, I mean, you maybe you're a Connecticut five. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. But um, you know, it it how what does a guy gotta do to get a date in this world? What do we gotta do? It's Are impossible. you asking me? It's, it's not <laughs> it's not come on crossing the streams, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well perhaps pitching your, your plight to uh, a well, room Jennifer, with youth in it maybe isn't the place to start. <laughs> well, you know, let's let's go on to this. Jennifer was supposed to be my wing girl. She was my co-host for two years on my show, um, the head of Fred. With the best buy with the best um line ever, right? We, they both have double D's, but her his are in his name. Um, that was a great one. But Jennifer bailed on me. She bailed on. Me. So this is our therapy session now, and you're Doctor Dwaskin. Go ahead, take the stage, Doctor Dwaskin. Can I ask? Is there is this real animosity here? I mean, it, it seems like there might be a hint. There's some sarcasm, but I, I feel like I'm Chuck Woolery on a bad episode of of uh, that dating show back in the '80s. What was that? Uh, Love, Love connection. connection. Love connection. Yes, I feel like we'll be right back in two and two here. But uh, no, is this real, or where this, are we at here? This is incredibly off. Yeah, no, it's not real at all. <laughs> no. Jennifer, Jennifer and I talk to almost every day still, and she's like, a, she lives 45 minutes away from me. She's never visited. Um, she likes to throw it in my face that I also have never visited. So we're, this is true. We've met once. Yeah, just once. One time. Wow. And we live 45 minutes away from each other. But that's how exciting Connecticut is. I don't even know where Larry lives. I've met him twice. So, uh, but uh, Jerry, Jerry says you're a Cincinnati eight. Oh, thank you, Jerry. So, Jerry, I've been to Cincinnati. He might even be a nine. So, you know, back to the show. I, <laughs> I, you know, let's let's get up, let's get off Jennifer. That's what she said. So, <laughs> I say go watch it. I say go watch it. If you dislike it, contact me. I'll give you Jennifer's number. Oh. Well, I mean, hey, Fred, we all know how much I hate, you know, if it's a bad movie, then I'll watch it. Yeah. Jennifer has horrible taste in movies. Horrible. Horrible. Like she thinks cinematic dreams are like 2012, the movie 2012. She thinks that's like Golden Globe worthy. And she she loves crap. She really I, loves a lot of crap. I do. It's true. A hundred percent true. If you can destroy the earth, I love it. So does everybody else like Shrinking that has watched it? Shrinking, I think, is one of the best new shows. It's right up there with Ted Lasso. It's no, it's, I mean, there's really? no coincidence there, I think, that Brett Goldstein made both. But, yeah, Shrinking is 10 episodes. It's, um, you know, I, as I watched it, some of my favorite, like Jessica Williams is one of my favorite characters on the show. And I got to say Ted McGinley, who you mentioned uh, who everyone would recognize. I think this is like one of his best roles. And it, and if you watch it to the end, his role just keeps getting better. His character keeps getting better and better and better. And uh, the person from Scrubs, Krista, Krista Miller, she's yeah. great. Um, and she's married to the creator of Scrubs. Is she? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so, yeah, I mean, there's just, it is really great. And, and like you said, it's very layered. And that byline was clearly... You're right. It was written when by someone who only saw the first two episodes. Yeah, it was weak. It's a weak byline. It's very weak. Is, uh, is Harrison Ford's character sarcastic? I haven't seen the show yet. So is does he play a sarcastic character? Because my favorite Harrison Ford roles are the roles where he has a little sarcasm to him, a little He's got bite. Yeah, they, he's got bite. Yeah, yeah they okay. took him they took him to the edge. 
um, as okay. far as he can go in TV, at least. But he plays a good role, and he I like his um, – he has great chemistry with the daughter. And it, it, it's a neat little concept they came up with, with shrinks dealing with their own issues. Yeah. It's, All right. It, we live in a, in a great time where Harrison Ford is now doing TV, this in 1923, and an Indiana Jones coming up, which from the preview I think looks amazing. But uh, horrible but yeah. name, though. Horrible name for the film. The Dial of Destiny. Yeah, that just it, that doesn't. Well, I think once you know what the dial is of, that yeah. turns the destiny. We well, may have any worse than cause. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So I mean, you know, <laughs> well, that's See, a good name. Just a horrible movie. Well, yeah. See, I like uh, maybe because of so they filmed it here in New Haven. That scene at the beginning is filmed in New Haven. And we went down there. They turned all of New Haven in the 1950s. And it was amazing to see all those cars lined up and see the chase scene and everything. Cool. Yeah, it was fun. But I, I, th I think I like it because my mother was with me. And as you could read, my mother says I'm special. You're, you are special. You know what else is special? Jennifer's first time on the show, and she's going to talk to us all about Picard. Wow. Oh, yay! Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A virgin. Yeah. That hasn't happened uh, in 35 years. Well, I'm glad you went first because I had no idea what I needed to say. I mean, you know, just talk about Picard. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. I probably, ride I my probably would have picked other shows. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've watched it. I like it. I'm a, you know, I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Um, Nerd. But. I totally, hundred percent nerd. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, so Picard. It takes place what, like, fifteen years after he retires from Starfleet. Um, it's in its third season now. Uh, what I like about it is that it's very next generation. So um, unlike the original Star Trek, where it was like one episode and one episode and one episode, uh, it's a full series. So it it starts with um, him and his vineyard in season one and. Um, they bring back all the old characters. Right now, they're kind of going through to the end, and I think this is going to be the last season. So they're basically bringing back every character from uh, Star Trek Next Generation. I haven't seen uh, Q yet. Hopefully, he'll be on it. That was one of my favorite characters. He was mm -hmm. in season two, right? Q? No, was he? No, he wasn't. He was? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> See, I really, should, I really should have thought this through a little further. <laughs> Wow, Jen Jennifer! I literally had like like no notice. That was like, uh, sure. that, that was Fred's job to prep you. Yeah, yeah. Well, have you met Fred? Yeah. No, no, he hasn't met me either. I would uh, I I would have gone with some terrible disaster movie, but I mean, no, Picard. I do watch it. It is a great show. Um, this season is really it's it's gotten really interesting. I mean, I I like the fact that they're bringing back all the old characters. Um, you get to see kind of where they've gone, where the, what they're up to. I don't know. It's a great show. Watch it. <laughs> if you like Star Trek, go go watch it. All right. We'll do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just go I'm watch it. I'm freaking sold. I am so sold yeah, on this. Right? I mean, yeah. I was hoping Jennifer would weave in some, some I don't know, some vampire aliens or something, or maybe Data was, you know, having an affair with a human. I don't know. No, inter but. Interspecies oh, type I, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it, but there is a there is another Crusher boy that comes in season three. And that really sounded really bad. It sound but good at all. No, <laughs> it's not that right. I'm good no. at all. No. But, <laughs> but makes an appearance in, in season three. Yeah. So that's um that kind of that that's an interesting little take on it. All right. Well, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, well, I suck at that. So uh yeah, I, I no, guess I, I won't be back. So that's cool. No, every, everyone has everyone uh you gotta start has, somewhere. Everyone has that moment of shock the first time they do it and then bounce back strong. So you're good. Yeah, you're good. You'll be fine. Yeah, well, you can, you can circle back to me. I'll, I'll do some research. I'll watch a show. I'll be right back. <laughs> we'll circle back. We'll circle back. In a, an attempt at shameless self-promotion. I mean, we just interviewed uh, Todd Stashwick, who plays Captain Shaw. And he said one of the coolest things for him was being able to be on the set with all the Legends characters. You know, and being there sitting between, you know, he said sitting between Riker and Picard for him was one of the biggest thrills of his life, you know, uh, and, and being able to have those conversations and seeing pictures of him later out and doing that. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Thanks yeah, for your sorry. input, Tim. Hey, thank you, Tim. Much better than me. Awesome. 
<laughs> yeah, let's not go with that. But yeah, you're, you're so All right. outspoken. All right, we're gonna or take something. This, we're gonna take this to the next level with oh. best of the best. We're just got, we have an '80s block. Coming your yeah, way. Yeah, man. And, and, and Jeff, you know, anytime I'm on the show, I'm all about the 80s. You know, I think this is this is at least my fourth time on the show. What have we covered? Flash Gordon. We covered uh, Teen Wolf. We covered Ninja 3, The Domination. And now what are we doing? I think we're doing Best of the Best. You have the cover art actually for Best of the Best 2, which actually was an amazing sequel to the first. We very rarely get great sequels. But in the form of martial arts movies, Best of the Best 2 is one of the, well, best of the best in martial arts films. Man, me being a karate guy back in the 80s and 90s, this movie really resonated with me. This still fits in my 80s motif because it was released in 1989. And believe it or not, it's got quite the lineup of, I mean, we'll call it A- minus list stars. I mean, this thing has, it, it, it was written by a guy by the name of Philip Ree. He, him and his brother Simon, they star in it. And Philip Ree, although he's definitely not an A-lister by any stretch of the imagination, he is an A-lister martial artist. And he actually competed in the 80s on the U.S. national karate team. And his competition against the South Korean team in real life is what inspired him to write this movie. So he and his brother star in the movie alongside some other real names that we would know. Uh, Julia Roberts' brother. What's his name? Uh, uh, Eric, that's his name. Eric Roberts stars in this movie right alongside the late and great Christopher Penn. He was in it as well. And uh, we have another guy there that everybody knows. We were talking about the Mandalorian and uh, Boba Fett. Uh, this guy made an appearance as his alter ego, Darth Vader. James Earl Jones stars in this movie as the legendary coach of the U.S. National Karate Team. And this movie is all about a ragtag band of Americans that receive letters to compete to earn a spot on the National Karate Team. And in doing so, they get the honor of flying to Seoul, Korea to compete against the South Korean team. Now, this is basically a Rocky ripoff filled with training montages and uh, manufactured drama that really wouldn't exist anywhere else. But we have some some great moments here with the team that's training. We have an excellent coach in James Earl Jones. Uh, we have a couple of people here that are in the movie that will shock you as well. It's funny when you're watching the movie, because although a karate guy and a big karate fan that I was, even I call BS on the, the film because they try to make it seem like Americans really give a shit about karate as a sport. They cut away to, to bar scenes when the Americans are competing and people in the bar are cheering and they're acting like they really are invested in this sport, which they have zero interest in, in all honesty. But they also got Ahmad Rashad, who at the time was the announcer of the NBA. So he was an amazing announcer. They brought him in to provide some legitimacy to this competition, and it was just really kind of fun to watch. But as a martial artist, this really is one of the best movies just because the martial arts in the film is really next level. The technique is 100% on point. The fight scenes are super, super well choreographed, and you can really get invested into the fight scenes. And the fact that the leader of the South Korean team just happened at a previous competition to murder the captain of the U.S. National Karate Team's brother. It was an accident, but he actually used a, a killer technique to put him out of his misery on the mat. So that gives us that drama there now where the captain of the U.S. team has to come and face off with the captain of the uh, the South Korean team in order to make this, this pinnacle of the movie at the end here. And during that time, we have Chris Penn that is trying to add some cowboy realism in. He's trying to give some, some, some southern boy, some tough guy attitude to the whole karate guy mix. And he hits us with some great quotes like, uh, you shouldn't block with your face. That was always a good one. Uh, while watching the team train, he yells out, drop him like a toilet seat. And while I've been to a shit ton of fights in my life, I've never heard anybody realistically say drop him like a toilet seat. And I still don't even get that now. I'm 50 years old and I still don't really understand that saying, but whatever. He says it with a lot of passion and we all believed it when we were watching this movie. But it comes to the pinnacle. It's the, the final fight. It's Tommy versus Daehan, the evil South Korean team leader. And they are about to face off at the end. And then they go at it for two or three rounds. And, well, Tommy gets himself in a position to where he has this move. It's the exact same move that Daehan used on his brother to kill his brother. And he's getting in position to make this final move and kill Daehan. And we have James Earl Jones say one word that just stops the entire audience. He looks at Tommy and he says... No. And the whole movie just stops. Tommy looks over and he goes, no, I'm not going to kill him, coach. And the timer runs out. 
and Tommy ends up not killing Dehan. And in an act of gratitude and uh, asking for forgiveness, Dehan stumbles his way over to Tommy, and he says, he says to him, to save a life in defeat is to earn victory and honor within. Your brother, too, was a great fighter. I deeply regret your loss, and I offer myself as your brother. And I'll tell you, every karate guy that ever watched this movie, every one of us, we all teared up right there at that moment. And if you don't tear up, I don't think you have a heart. So if you want to tear up, you want to watch a great action movie, you want to see some old school people, for some B-list, maybe some, some low-level A-listers compete in a karate movie, Best of the Best is one of the best martial art movies out there, and I highly recommend it. What a great job. <laughs> that was a fantastic review. That was a great job. I'm enamored, I'm enamored by one thing. What's that? Are you are you married to a dentist? <laughs> no, but I did just buy these. Actually, okay. these, these these are all veneers. I did just buy them last year, and honestly, Jesus. I just paid them off last week. So I'm very happy to announce they are actually my teeth now. The bank no longer owns them. Very excited about that. <laughs> I thought you were married to a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying not to be 50. See, you're, you're trying to get on that five to six scale. I'm trying to stay in that six to seven range at 50. So I, I paint my face on every Sunday. This is all bullshit. You know, it's just for men. And then the fake teeth and the little flat build hat. I'm trying to clock in at about 35. I don't know if I'm pulling it off, but that's the goal. No, oh, yeah, 36 strong, at least. Strong 37 and a half. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. <laughs> so this movie, Fred, uh, one Oscar winner, Lewis Fletcher, and yeah. three Oscar nominees, Eric Roberts, James Earl Jones, and you, you haven't mentioned yet, Sally Kirkland. She's in my notes. She is here to mention because she's she's probably done more other than Eric Roberts than anybody else in the list, honestly. I mean, she's been in a lot of high-profile roles and a lot of high-profile movies, and she's earned a ton of awards. So she's probably had the most impact on Hollywood overall unless you take Eric Roberts into account as the B-list king or James Earl Jones, obviously voicing Darth Vader. But overall, I think Sally Kirkland uh, made a real big impact on Hollywood. Got that, it. Uh, that was impressive. That was really good. He's, a, he's really a good, good. good talker. He's a good talker. <laughs> well, I had to do my research. I actually watched the movie this afternoon. Knowing that I was coming on, my wife and I were cooking dinner, and I turned it on in the living room. And when I found that I was still quoting the movie, I thought, okay, I'm fine. I can, I can get it. So. <laughs> All right. That was fabulous. Did you tell your wife to drop dinner on the plate like a toilet seat? <laughs> drop it like yeah. a toilet seat, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that salmon. <laughs> Does nice. the, how many best of the best movies are there? There's actually four, believe it or not. And one and two were really good. Uh, three was eh, kind of meh. Yeah, Chris Penn was already gone when they did three and four was just terrible. I mean, it was super, super low budget. Uh, but one and two are a lot of fun and they both have some really, really well choreographed fight scenes. So if you are a martial arts fan, highly recommend to check, check it out because it, it they're done really, really well. Yeah, so Jennifer's going to run out and watch three and four now because that's what she does. Because <laughs> they're yeah, the bad ones. Definitely. They're the worst. Yeah, just yeah. The crap. Yeah, the yeah. worse, the worse, the better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, four is the worst of the worst instead of the best of the best. So she already was the worst and filmed with a camcorder. So most likely, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds right up my alley. I, I, I'll probably love it. Like on an iPhone, going, "All right, take two. Okay. All right, we'll have we'll have Jennifer will come back and and review three and four, best of the best three and. There you four. go. I'll be here for that for sure. All right. In the meantime, let's do the bad batch. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, that's you, Tim. Yeah, yeah. So uh, for those who don't know, I'm a I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Always have been a huge Star Wars fan. And, and so anytime there's anything new Star Wars, I'm excited to sit down and watch it. Like you know, every Wednesday morning when Mandalorian and Bad Batch releases, I sit down in my living room with a cup of coffee and while the world is all quiet and and watch my Star Wars, watch my shows so that nobody can bother me. Uh, so yeah, I was very excited. This morning was the season finale of season two for the Bad Batch. There, it was a dual episode release. So I won't get into many spoilers about that because it's the day of the release. But uh, so this was created by Dave Filoni, with, who I firmly believe with John Favreau at his side are here to save Star Wars from imploding upon itself and continuously bad story writing. Uh, these guys are doing a really good job and, and the character build and, and all the things that they're doing. This, of course, is an animated series. And Dave Filoni was the guy that was basically doing Clone Wars. He's done Star Wars Rebels, uh, a bunch of other things and coming up with some really cool uh, uh, 
creations and character creations and stories. One of the things that I like most about the Bad Batch and that I like about uh, Star Wars Rebels and things in Clone Wars is that these animated series help fill in the in-betweens between the movies and help fix some of the plot holes and issues that some of the movies had. And, and, you know, they call it, it's called retconning. They come back in and they're like, okay, well, uh, this happened over here, but this happened over here. So we have to make these two things match. How do we do that? Well, we have this animated series over here that tells a really good story and helps explain why these things happen. And so that's what they did with with the Bad Batch. Bad Batch was introduced in season seven of Clone Wars as Clone Force 99. And then there was later on said that they call themselves the Bad Batch because they were a, a batch of uh, mistaken clones that, that, you know, turned out bad, I guess. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so what they started doing is they started adding background detail and everything. So episode one uh, uh, of the Bad Batch even has ties to Star Wars Rebels. And then it kind of takes you in through there where you meet a character from in episode one of, of season one that that you meet later in Star Wars Rebels. And so it's very kind of cool. They're introducing a lot of things. Today's episodes uh, of the Bad Batch has a really cool tie in to the movie Rogue One. And yeah, yeah, it's just very cool how they're doing this and how they're building it up. And, and the best thing for me is that so I, I love Star Wars and I'll sit down and watch it like I'm honestly I'm on my like. I just finished my eighth re- eighth or ninth rewatch of Star Wars Clone Wars, the entire series. Uh, I finished watching Aunt, uh, Kenobi literally an hour ago. Uh, I was watching that again. I, it's it's Star Wars has always been my comfort jam. And so being able to sit here and, and watch and see these all these new stories get created is, is very cool for me. Especially because in like so, some of the animated series like Bad Batch. The episodes are are quick intakes. They're 21 to 27 minutes long. And so it's something that I can squeeze in while I'm in the midst of doing something else. And I'm still able to get the gist of the story. I'm still able to get the understanding of what's going on, who they're trying to tie in this into or what they're what they're doing or, you know, what characters they're introducing and why and, and all those things. But for a Star Wars fan, if you haven't, you know, and some Star Wars fans are like, well, I'm not going to watch a cartoon. That's for kids. I hate to break it to you, Skippy. All Star Wars is made for kids. George Lucas himself has said so. So uh, just be a kid. Enjoy the show and enjoy the fact that they're fixing some of the biggest issues in Star Wars. Like you rise of Skywalker somehow Palpatine returned. God, I hate even saying that makes me nauseous. Uh, Anyway, um, but. But yeah, so uh that's a nerd. I am. I am a I'm a horrible nerd. It's the way it works. They're, de- they're dealing with that in Mandalorian, also, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And 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 I think what's gonna happen here, and I, I have so many nerd theories that would make Fred's head spin <laughs> about this, but I think we're gonna start seeing some of these shows kind of blending in together where because they're running parallel storylines and where they but they have to in order to be able to introduce this story to this story to make this show work. And so I think in season three of Bad Batch, you're, you're going to see some of that where you're going to start seeing some introduction to some possibly some of the Mandalorian characters um, and a few more of the uh, uh, a few more of the Star Wars Rebels characters. So it's it's kind of exciting. So if you have a problem with animated shows because you think they're for kids, think again. If you sit down to watch Star Wars Clone Wars, please get past season one. Season two starts right off with like a beheading or two. Trust me, it's not for kids. Um, season, yeah, the Bad Batch Gus said it was for kids. Yeah, uh, beheading it never is. a kid or two. You know, I mean, kids I can mean, learn a lot from beheadings. It's not blood and gore beheadings. It's just you know, they show a body and there's like you know no head there. Um, just rolls so, past the screen real quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty much. It looks like a pumpkin rolling off to the side. It'll be fine. Uh, they've seen worse at Halloween. So anyway, but yeah, just sit down, watch it. It's very enjoyable. Uh, I think each season of The Bad Batch has between, uh, I think, like 12 or 15 episodes. It's not a long watch. It's very easy. The longest watch out of all of them, season one, episode one, I think was like an hour and 20 minutes because they were packing a lot into the story to build up why you needed to watch The Bad Batch. But yeah, on Disney Plus, go check it out. It's the only place you can get it right now. Um, which Star Wars cartoon was Bo Katan from? She was in Clone Wars, and then you'll see her again in Rebels. So that's a good example of animation. Yeah. And so was uh, 
who was the guy in Mandalorian season two, the kind of the gunshot guy, but Cade, K. Oh, what was his name? Um, the weird alien guy. Yeah. He was a cool alien. He was kind of like a Clint Eastwood alien. Had the guy. hoses coming out of his cheeks. Oh, Cad Bane. Yeah, yeah, Cad Bane. There we go. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah so they're, they're definitely merging. Yeah. The he was in both as well, both both Clone Wars and Rebels. And all the stormtroopers are Boba Fett, so they could bring in any of these Clone War or people, right? Because that's the actor. The right. Yeah. Boba so- Fett. Right, Timur Morrison. So yeah, if they brought uh, if they bring in different characters, but all those are voiced by D. Bradley Baker. So if it's an animated series, they you know if it's an animated version, they're going to use D. Bradley Baker. If it's live action, they're going to use Timur Morrison. Tim, does your wife enjoy it? <laughs> My wife uh, likes like um, just say um, no. Just say no. N- n- no, yeah. no. You know, you can't we're, justify it. It's okay. Yeah, bro. You're, you're trying to we're, justify it. Just we we no. watch Indiana Jones together. She does not watch Star Wars all that much with me. So okay. fair enough. Fair enough. So she lets you do it. That's what makes her an angel. Yeah. Uh, she puts up with me. She's a saint. And you'll have plenty of time if you're a Cubs fan. You'll have plenty of time to watch since they're going to suck this year. Actually, I'm only wearing a Cubs hat because the last time I was on here, uh, Jeff accused me of trying to steal his look. So I put down my Detroit hat and I picked up my Cubs hat. And I'm like, well, I'm not stealing anybody's look tonight. So screw you, Jeff. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) It's funny because the only other baseball cap I have is a Cubs hat. <laughs> it's, nice. it's, yeah, it's, uh, those that's the only other place I've seen uh baseball, Wrigley Field and the bleachers. And there's really no I, other way to see baseball. I, I tried so hard and yet I still failed. All right. I love seeing Jennifer right now. She's sitting there like fuck, they're talking sports. No, she loves it. <laughs> she loves no, it. no, no. I love I like I like baseball. I'm a baseball girl. She's all right. We already we actually made a plan today to go to a game that is in twenty twenty four. Oh wow! So you're gonna meet each other finally? No, we already did. No, we've met each other. other. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna to go to Patriots Day next. We're both working this year. Patriots Day is the game where the Red Sox play at 11 in the morning because of the Boston Marathon. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very fun day, and Jennifer usually works the marathon and then goes to the game or doesn't go to the game or just drinks a lot. No, oh, no. I usually we we've gone to the game probably the last three. No, not uh, twenty twenty. So last year, and then um, in nineteen we went on Patriots Day. It's a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's get to our last one. This is Aliens. What's up? Uh, <laughs> hang on, let me put the thing up. So this is Aliens. I'm gonna try and do my best, Larry Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I set the precedent. So I, I Aliens that... is a lot like uh, Best of the Best in that it had two good movies and then went off the rails in the series. So the uh, Aliens, which we're going to talk about today, is a James Cameron masterpiece. So one, I'm sure everyone has seen Aliens. So this is more of a you should go rewatch Aliens sort of thing. Unfortunately, you have to pay to stream it, but likely you have it on VHS or DVD because this is a classic, and you probably picked it up along the way at some point. So I'm suggesting a rewatch, saying that I've recently rewatched it, and it holds up. It's solid. It's really great. And so Aliens is a sequel to Alien. <laughs> they got real clever, real clever in the 80s with the names. So, But Alien was a 1979 movie by Ridley Scott, right? And it, he had a, a ship in space. The uh, Nostromo, I think I'm saying that right. And uh, they get an alien on there, and they 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 go to a planet, and they discover an alien species. It infects one of them, kills everybody on that. It's one of the the best uh, kind of sci-fi movies. St- stars Tom Skerritt, Sigourney Weaver, uh, and a bunch of other great folks. And the only one who survives is Sigourney Weaver. Okay, so she's the only one. That makes it out alive. So flash forward to 1986. But here's a little background. When we think of James Cameron today, who is the director and writer of Aliens, we think of that and maybe Terminator and Terminator 2. But what's interesting is I started looking back on Aliens. Aliens was made before Terminator even came out. And and so, or at least it went into production. 
And so James Cameron had a lot of trouble on aliens with the cast and the crew taking him seriously because they had no one had seen Terminator. And, um, and they're like, who's this guy? Okay. <laughs> now put that when you think about that in today's mindset, James Cameron, who's created three of the biggest blockbuster billion dollar movies of all time. This is back then. Now the term in the, the Terminator, when you think about the Terminator was really his first big movie coming off Piranha two, the spawning, right? So it's interesting to think the two of the greatest sci-fi <laughs> movies ever were written by and directed by somebody who was just coming out of the gate, right? He, this is, this is, this is early first James Cameron. It's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Cause I don't know if when I was reflecting on it, I was like, you just think, Oh, it's James Cameron. Of course it's good. But Terminator two and aliens, which is the sequel to alien is those are two of the greatest sequels of all time that probably in both case cases best the original movie. So it's, uh, I mean, I know earlier Larry mentioned best of yeah, the it's best. It's no best too. of the best too, by any means, right. but I, right. I get what you're trying to say. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Maybe Godfather <laughs> two is in that, in that league too. You might be able to compete with best of the best three. Maybe, sure maybe, <laughs> maybe, but we'll have to have Jennifer back to let us know if that is true. So in 1986, <laughs> when aliens is done, now, the re one of the way reasons Aliens got written is uh, Cameron was doing a kind of a script for it because the Terminator got delayed because Arnold had to actually stop filming the Terminator and go make uh, that Conan movie, Conan, not Conan the, the redhead, Conan the Barbarian. And so during this time, James Cameron, which I didn't realize, wrote for, as a writing credit for First Blood Part Two, another amazing sequel, Rambo Part Two. And he did the the aliens um, script. So thinking back then, sequels weren't like now where everything was a money grab. So this is the difference between 79 and 86. They were interested in the idea of a sequel, but you know, nobody was that hot on it. As a matter of fact, they didn't want the the 20th century Fox didn't even want Sigourney Weaver because they figured she would be too expensive. And she wanted a million dollars. Think about that demand today. That's like one million dollars. <laughs> yeah. And so, but they finally negotiated Cameron and Gail Ann Hurd, who was the producer, executive producer. They insisted on it. They got her in. There was some negotiations, all that kind of stuff. So what happens? It's now 57 years later. So uh, Sigourney Weaver has been floating around for 57 years. They find her, right? They bring her back to earth. She realizes it's been this long. You got Paul Reiser there with her. He's got amazing hair. It's worth it just to go back to see this movie, <laughs> just to see Paul Reiser's hair. It's, it's so dense. It's so crazy. It yeah. is so, and this, is, I think, is only his really either first or second movie, like big, big movie that he's done. So, of course, uh, she's there. In the version I rewatched, had some of the cut scenes that were put in, not in the original. But there's a, a, a very quick thing where uh, Sigourney Weaver realizes her child had grown and died. And interestingly enough, the picture that they use of her kid as an older woman was actually Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver's mother. So, oh, wow. <laughs> interesting. So, um, so of course, um, so, so Sigourney's there. She's kind of like, oh, okay, thanks for finding me, blah, blah, blah. Right. And they're like, oh, you remember that planet? You know, the one where you went on last time. Well, there's people living there now. And they're like, what? And shit. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, oh. And then there's something happened on that planet. She's like, you can't go back. He's like, you can't. These, these are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> we got to kill them all. And they're like, so they're like, no way I'm going. And then finally she agrees to go back to the planet where there's now like a whole base of people living where these aliens are. And of course you see a scene now keep in mind from the original, if you only seen the original movie, I may mention a scene that was in an extended cut, but where they find the ship or they find the area with the eggs and they get infected. So now there's all this mayhem going on. So now they're sending a military on envoy to this planet. So, you know, they, 
go to sleep in that little frozen thingy that they do. And so they can travel long distances. And now she reluctantly is going back. And so they go back. And so also in this movie is Michael Bean, who was Kyle Reese in Terminator 2. He has a main role in this. And also from Terminator 2, Lance Hendrickson plays Bishop, a synthetic organism, uh, an android, if you will, and uh, an AI. So Larry's afraid of yeah. AI suddenly after not shutting up about it for months. <laughs> the, um, and uh, <laughs> so, uh, so those are some of the folks. And the other person who was in the Terminator movie that's in this movie now is bill paxton bill paxton has a much more expanded role wait a minute bill paxton wasn't in terminator yes he was if you go back in the very beginning there's three punks that are messing yep. with arnold and one of them is bill paxton so um and then who else you got there's a, there's a bunch of other other folks there's just a ton of ton of great people in this movie it's it's a so they go and of course everyone's no one's there when they get there but then they find the girl newt and Newt is the only survivor, uh, and she's kind of managed to avoid. And basically, there's a lot of aliens and things. So, you know, it's a whole thing. There's a mother alien. Apparently, they didn't have any, like, the um, sketches or anything. They had to recreate all of it just from watching the original movie. So wow. that's interesting. And so... Um, yeah, so you you watch it. There is one interesting thing at the end when they're like, oh, the planet's going to blow up in 15 minutes. Uh, uh, uh. Well, it actually lasts 15 minutes. In the movie. <laughs> it's an actual 15 minutes. Oh, I thought that was interesting just because yeah, you usually, never see it's that. Like, usually it's like, you go, oh, no, we only have 10 minutes. And it, like it's an hour later. Well, Jeff, it's like, it's Jeff not, to, not to say you're being long-winded here, but couldn't have we just watched the movie with you at this point? <laughs> I feel like I, mean, I feel like, I feel we, like I, we could have just watched with you. I don't feel like you said that to Larry when he basically gave you all of best of the best. He was very animated though, and it, look at those <laughs> look at those teeth. I'm trying look to at them. The anyway. First time I've been embarrassed for my new teeth. Damn it, they're glowing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this movie got Sigourney Weaver an Academy Award. It won two Academy Awards. I think it was up for six. So it's. It's it's now recognized as one of the uh, greatest science fiction movies ever. And uh, so I think everyone should check it out. I think what Fred's trying to say is, game over, man. Game over. <laughs> Which Bill Paxton says he wrote that line, by the way. Yeah. So. Amazing line that we use, I still use today from time to time. He was good comic relief in that movie. And uh, yeah, so, all right. Go see yeah, Aliens. That, that was a good I'm job, saying. Jeff. I'm sorry I picked on you. Yeah, that was, that was, <laughs> nice you gave me a, gave me a little complex. Gave me a complex. I That's whose show we're on here, folks. It's Jeff's show. I know. And I, I forgot that for a moment. Oh, that's right. Uh, this is this is an interesting thing too. Is so Lance Hendrickson. That's a scene where they're going, right? Like that. Yep. And so originally it was just supposed to be him. This is what Jerry's getting at. And there's just supposed to be him. And they didn't tell Bill Paxton they were going to use his hand. He just grabbed Bill Paxton's hand and then started doing that knife thing. And they actually nicked his pinky. But like, um, but yeah, <laughs> so it was like, uh, that is that is another interesting tidbit. Thank you, Jerry, very That's much. Fun. Yeah, so it's cool. All right. That's beautiful. Yeah. Love it. One of my all-time favorites. It's a good one. It's a good one. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'm crossing the streams. <laughs> uh, Jennifer just, stayed too. She stayed the whole show. I know. Where was I going to go? I don't Did know. She was, leave? she was learning. She was learning. She wasn't going to Fred's house. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's, that's right. the damn show. I wasn't going there. <laughs> <laughs> there, there used to be. There used to be a. Um, uh, a folklore, if you will, that I was actually locked in his basement. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. With that. Yeah. Let that me was, out once in a while. That was that Fred had uh, <laughs> spread that rumor. The um, that's cool. Um, Larry, thank yes. you for joining us. Thank you for having. Remind me. everyone uh, that you don't have a podcast and maybe read yeah, it. I don't have a podcast, so please do not listen at any time. No, I do create a ton of content. So if you want to follow me, everything I talk about is content creation, branding, messaging, all that fun stuff. You can follow me on Instagram at the larry roberts that's probably the best place to find me right now awesome tim 
When you're, not bat, when you're not bad batching, remind everyone about your podcast. Yeah, I'm Tim. I'm the host of the FSF podcast. Like I said earlier, I host with uh, two of my friends, Nick and Kathleen, and we do an interview show every week. You can find us on fsfpopcast.com. That's probably the best way to find us. Uh, you have links to audio and video from there. We have a blog, and you can get links to our brand new Patreon page. Please go subscribe. We need your money. Say put hundred dollars. Put hundred dollars on his. Tim, say time. your tagline. Say your tagline. The all, all nerdy. All nerdy, nerdy. All nerdy. No dirty. There you go. I love it. Couldn't you? <laughs> all nerdy. No ladies. <laughs> <laughs> huh, wrong. I got one. So that's all. I oh, need. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Fred. I got nothing. Thank you. I got nothing. You got nothing. All you right. can find my apostrophes. But go buy Jennifer's book. I'll sell. I'll I'll push for Jennifer today. I'll market her. Yeah, go you buy, should. Go buy Jennifer's books. They got a lot of hot dudes on the cover that she talks about endlessly with their abs and their beautiful skin tones and beautiful hair. It's quite disgusting to hear. But, yeah, well, they have some, so that that's a plus. Most of them. But I've actually read her books. I don't think she's read any of mine, but I've actually read her books, so I win. That's like the podcast world. Uh, I've oh, I listen to your podcast. I've never. Heard it. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, Jennifer, remind everyone about your awesome books, and you can get them on Amazon. How do we yeah, find your books? What's the best just, way to search for your books? Just go to Jennifer Field and uh, put it on Amazon, and then you'll come up with all of my books. You can follow me on Instagram, Jennifer Field Author. You can follow me on TikTok, just Jennifer Field. Um, that's a newer platform, and I'm working on it. So, but yeah, you can get all my books on Amazon. Um, I don't have a hat or fancy headphones like you guys. I'm feeling like a little left out. Didn't wear my glasses or my hat, but it was great being here. It was great having you. Well, and you, congratulations you know on your but next time. I'll, I'll do my homework a little bit better because you know Fred kind of said, "Hey, no, it's all <laughs> come good. It's, on all, on. it's all good. It's all good." I think I'm, you got, I'm, I, I'm signing off and I'm watching Picard like immediately. Yeah, yeah you I, should. You yeah. should. I, I mean, just on my recommendation 100%. alone, it, they're they're going to skyrocket in views. I mean, Q was literally in all. I, do you know? Two. Okay, let me just tell you that my husband actually texted me and told me he was like, "Did you not pay attention the entire second season?" I was like, <laughs> "I did, sort of, kind of." I, I, I didn't even you, watch you know I mean? it, and I knew he was the main character <laughs> right. in season two. <laughs> Good job, Jennifer. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't wait to come back and, you know, maybe I'll just talk about a movie that I actually like, enjoy watching. Look, look, like I said, you're welcome back anytime. And this is, that's what it's rare that someone knocks it out of the park the first time. Cause it's like, it is just what you said. It's like you're in your head and you're like, all right. And then you just go, it was such a good movie. It was a great show. There well, were some people in it with a starship. People don't so, realize how much work it is shoes. to talk about TV and movie shows. And so there you go. Anyway, you did that's fine. It. You did great. Hey, you Jennifer, did. real quick question. If I was going to yeah. start reading your books, which one should I start with? Give me the title of The Beginner's Guide to Jennifer's Books. The Beginner's Guide to Jennifer's Books, I would go with Jackson, which is uh, book one in the Blood Angel Chronicles. It's going to lead off the entire season, uh, the entire series, and uh, it's a great book. Uh, he is a CEO of um, the uh, hotel industry and a vampire and a fallen archangel. So, cool. All right, Jackson. Right. Jackson. Oh, there, there it is, it right is. there. Okay. Yeah, with with the, with the handsome Stuart Reardon on the cover. Okay, with an X, obviously. Yeah, you got to say that. Yeah, yeah, well, you you got to say it with an X. Yeah. You never, no. you never want to mess with Fred. He's got stuff up his pocket, you know, up his sleeves, ready to go. I did. I didn't up have that pockets. ready to go. <laughs> I didn't yeah, have that ready. He's got things up his sleeves, down his pockets, in his pants, whatever he's got. Wow. Oh, well, good job, Fred. Way to be there for him, man. Yeah. yeah. Wait. I try. All right. I, I don't even. I don't even have oh, a book Zachary, around me. Yeah. yeah, I can't have these on my desk. This is. There is no way. I'm, no, I gotta maybe just do the digital copies. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to go yeah. straight for Kindle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. He's gonna even. <laughs> yeah, he was all right. He was all like, Jennifer Fields can be on. She's my favorite. I'll, I'll be all posing with right. it. You should be. <laughs> I celebrate her entire catalog. It's amazing. Yeah. Jeff, if you want to see marketing genius, when you got to see Jennifer at a book show when she's 
pimping her books at her table. So I sat next to her for about an hour or two and I listened to her. She has this speech and she plays the, you know, flipping her hair and all that stuff. She, she plays that. it all. She plays it all. No, it's all chicks. It's nothing but chicks. But um, she has this spiel where she just talks about sexy rock stars and, you know, she's very and she compl- she's learned a marketing genius to engage a woman in she compliments her shoes every time. Oh, OK. She looks at the okay. woman. She goes, not, okay, not every shoes. time. I, I pick out a different something on their outfit, something that I like, something that's legitimate. Yeah, you're good at it. You know how to do it. And Get she sells talking. out, wipes the whole table out. It's great. So first of all, it's spiel. Not spiel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> spiel. The spiel. spiel. Okay. You got it. You got to kind of get in there and get spiel. Not spiel. Anyway. Spiel. Um, anyway, all right. Check out my podcast. I have uh, classic conversations. Uh, just you know, that's it. I don't. Nope. I don't know. Who, I don't know which uh, interview I'm doing on Monday. Is it'll be someone maybe somewhat famous or kind of famous. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Or maybe it's someone you don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I have so many interviews. It's embarrassing. I've I mean, only been I, mostly jealous of your last months of, of, you know, our releases. So, so, well, all right, well, hang tight. You can tell me how jealous you are when we come back from the break. Thanks everyone Yay. for joining us. We'll see you Thanks. next week. And that has been another episode of crossing the streams. Join us every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, live on Facebook and YouTube. Follow the Jeff DeWaskin Show on YouTube to be alerted every time we go live with your hosts, Jeff DeWaskin, Ron Lippett, Howard Rosner, Bob Phillips, Sal D'Amelio. We're all in the socials. Follow us. Listen to our podcast, Classic Conversations, and the Sal and Bob Show. Check them all out, and we'll see you next week and every week when we cross more streams right here. See you then.